Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Beast Family Adventures. Welcome back if you are returning. We appreciate you guys. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that notification, and uh, if you like the video, click that like while you're at it too. So, uh, I kind of started this video halfway through what I'm actually doing. Actually, you can probably tell from the, from the title of the video, um, because I'll be honest, uh, a little outside my comfort zone with this, working with uh, refrigerated units and um, and anything remotely has anything to do with that. Um, usually, I'm, I'm, I just have basic knowledge of electronics, um, so didn't really know if I could tackle this this uh, kind of thing. But um, with uh, I'll, I'll give you a little backstory. So when we were in Citrus uh, the other weekend. See the video that's uh, uh, down in the playlist. Um, I noticed that the temperature of the refrigerator, uh, we have a Dometic 75, 75 quart dual zone. Um, I think it's like a CFX 75 DZW, if anyone wants the model number. But um, I noticed that it kept the temperature gauges were always significantly high. I think at one point it said 80 degrees and it's been run for 20 to 48 hours. Um, and you open everything up and it's a solid block of ice. So I knew that the compressor was still working, um, but something was going on with it, recognizing what kind of temperature it is and so, so I did a little research and found out that it was a thermistor it's called. Um, and so I said, okay, well, um, how much is one of those? And they, I found a variety of ranges. No website really had anything definitive. Um, the whole experience on trying to find that part was really, I mean, not one of my favorites, let's just say. So, um, trying to figure out, I watched a couple YouTube channels or I tried to look on YouTube to see if anyone else had done it. Um, I think one or two maybe. A handful I have talked about it. Um, usually it's for the refrigerators inside the RV, not the portable one that I have. One person I saw from Australia kind of talked about how to do it real quick. Didn't really match mine too much because it was like a, a WASCO, W A E S C O. So I guess it's the a, a same brand, but maybe diff, little differences here. Maybe like Honda and Acura or something like that, Nissan Infiniti. Something along those lines. So <clears throat> I went to go order the parts. Well, I didn't know what part number it was. I didn't know where to even get it. Even Amazon didn't have any of these. So I called the medic. Um, well, first of all, I emailed them. Let's just say I emailed their parts department and said, hey, this is what I'm looking for. The original email I get back is that's an unserviceable part. You have to take it in uh, to a service center. Well, I'm really not trying to do that. So I call him. Um, really nice woman picks up the phone um, and uh, she goes, oh yeah, we, you know, here they are. It gives me the part numbers. Both, you know, because there's two thermistors for the dual zone, one temperature gauge or temperature sensor for each one. And uh, she goes, you want me to see if we have that in stock? You know what? Perfect. Yes, yes I do. I don't give a shit, just, Order me up, send me over, and I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out. Well, no, we don't have them in stock. Okay, so I originally I think, well, uh, I'll order them, no problem. I, I mean, I, I don't plan on going camping anytime soon. Uh, Caden starts football uh, August 1st, I'm coaching again. Um, so we're gonna be crazy busy uh, for football season. So she goes, oh, uh, you know, honestly, the best thing you could do is just Google the part number. Wow. You know, didn't give me any other option. Uh, Google the part number, all right? Yeah, uh, oh, okay, all right, have a nice day. You know, it's like, you didn't give me the option to just order from you guys? Like, nothing? Like, I couldn't, nothing, just Google it. So I said, all right, well, I'll just Google it then. I got the part numbers now, right? Should be easy. Ha, no. 
I'm going around. I mean, first of all, the one part number for one of them was coming back. The other part number didn't even come back. I found one of them, and I'm like, well, if I'm already digging into this thing, I might as well change both of them, because I don't know, maybe both of them are wrong. Both of them weren't reading right. So, um, so I end up finding this one website out of Australia, and I go into the website, and it looks like J Jimmy B Bill Bob, uh, some scam artist, is just throwing up this website just for stuff to rob people. I mean, it was so like, I mean, I think a high school student, or not, no, 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 high school students, I mean, they're, they, I mean, I'm talking about probably elementary school that are just learning how to build websites, built this website. That's probably what it is. Um, so I said, man, how much is it? Um, it ended up being just under a hundred bucks with everything, with uh, both thermistors and this uh, heat sink compound that's required, the little thing that you some friggin' crap that you put on there and you shove it in there and it's supposed to work. If, if you don't have it, it don't work. So anyway, so, and then um, shipping was like $30 because it's coming from Australia. So I said, man, I'd much rather spend a hundred bucks than 1600 on getting a new one. Because we love this thing. Uh, we, we love it for camping. It's such a game changer, especially when you're doing some bigger events in multiple days. Trying to find ice just sucks. Uh, we've done that for a year or two, and we finally bit the bullet, got something this, and, and I mean, this is just great. So, I know I'm kind of rambling on, trying to give some little back backstory, but, so I got the first one out. Um, it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, there's a lot of screws that go everywhere, and it doesn't really give you good access. But, um, like I said, I, I, this is the first time I've ever messed with a refrigeration unit, so I really, <laughs> if, you, if you say I don't know what I'm doing, that's probably giving me too much credit. Um, so I got the first one out, now there's two. And what they don't tell you in these videos is that it appears that there's two channels that are going into, from the compressor area, to the uh, chambers, if you wanna call it. Um, so, and it, but they're not marked. So you don't know which one's which. So, you know there's a red, and then there's a white. You got red and white uh, clips here. I'll see if I can. Yep, see, see, the other one's red. I just took the white one. So, um, what I did is I took out one, because I don't know if this is the longer one or the shorter one. I have no idea. Um, or, more importantly, I don't know which hole is which. Because they don't tell you. I don't know which hole goes to which one. So um, I would do one at a time, just pull out one, replace it with the other, then pull out the other and replace that one so you know everything matches up. Um, so I caught you up. We're here. Um, yeah, let's uh, show you what I'm dealing with. So as you see, here's the, the back plate. Um, where your uh, power inputs are. Um, here's your your fan with the evaporator, the compressors right here. Um, you have to pull this back a little bit. You have to bend this back a little bit to get this part, which is not easy because that is just about as far as it will come out because it's still connected. So if you can see, you can see that little white goop and that tan stuff that's where the thermistors go and let's see if i can get you i don't know if i'm going to be able to just can't get the camera that way um there we go you see there's two holes the one to the right is the one uh, it's not focusing good. the one to the right is the one i just took out so um yeah so uh, let's um, let's finish the job here. So just for your information, they are two different sizes. I believe one's a 700 millimeter, 
The other one's a 500 millimeter or something like that. I know one's 700, I don't forget what the other one is, but you can see the difference. So I am doing the white one first, which appears to be the longer one. So um, now they do have this fished through these wiring nightmare and plugs into the back to make it look pretty. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to make it as professional as I can, um, but we'll just have to see how it turns out. For you people that don't have catcher mitts as hands, probably be a little bit easier for you. Those bigger guys, sometimes it doesn't always pay to be big. heat sink on this one this is actually uh, actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be pretty bad I thought I was gonna screw this thing up and have to pay $1,600 to get a new one because if any of you are out there know um, having two little ones primitive camping uh, yeah you need to bring uh, as much as you can, uh, it, like ice pops and drinks and water and stuff, not only for health and safety purposes, but for your own sanity too. I don't really know how much to put on this one, but I guess I'm just gonna, oh boy, oh boy. Gonna cover it. I don't know how much to cover it, but... Alright. That looks pretty well covered. Stick to the end of the video, and uh, we'll test this thing out. I'll plug it in and see if it fixes the issue. If not, guess what? Another sixteen dollars down, sixteen hundred dollars down the drain. Oh, let's, oh boy! Come on, get in there. There we go. That other video, as I said, I saw, it said push it all the way until it don't go no more. As far as it's gonna go. All right. Let's do that red one. This off. But you see how much of that goop has been on it? They have it all the way. I'm sure they just put it on the edge and it just went all the way, but that's the goop. It's all over my hands now. Ugh. Hopefully this works. I don't feel like spending another $1,600. Um, I think after um, a side note, give you a little bit more information about the channel. Um, after Jeeping with Judd this year, this is in February, I think the trailer is going to go under the knife. Um, I met a guy who is a subscriber, by the way, uh, that I work with who is a, uh, a master welder. Uh, welded in the, um, I believe it's West Virginia's um, coal mines for years upon years. And um, decided to give it up. Uh, wanted to do just fabbing just for fun help friends out and family so I told him about my trailer and uh, he was definitely down to redo it so we're gonna redo it the whole inside the whole outside um, it should turn out pretty well um, I don't know how long it's gonna take uh, a lot of money um, but uh, we will definitely have a separate playlist for that because it's gonna be probably multiple episodes um, but if I could relay what's in my mind onto that trailer, it's gonna be pretty badass. Yeah. 
Now the guy I was watching on YouTube said that there probably should be enough heat sink in the little tubes, the residual. But he suggested just going ahead and put more on there because more don't hurt it, but less will. So might as well be safe than sorry because honestly, I don't want to have to do this shit again. Now, I guess we could put all these screws in their red hole. As you can see, I buttoned everything up, and in true me fashion, I have some spare parts. Uh, let's see. Got, a got some spare parts. So, uh, I really don't know where these would have went. They're probably one of these hidden screws somewhere, but uh, I'll just hold on to them. I mean, it's no big deal. I got all of them in, uh, or most of them in, should I say. But, uh, all right, so since it's been upside down for a while, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it right side up and uh, wait several hours before I turn it on and let the compressor settle. So uh, I got other chores to do around the house, so um, you don't need to see that boring stuff. So uh, we'll just cut over to me coming back to it. And here we go. Well, it's the next day. Obviously, you can see my shirt has changed. I decided to, I mean, honestly, I just got caught up with other stuff, didn't get back to it, but I wanted to uh, give it about 24 hours to, to settle, for the compressor to settle. Um, I don't really know if it needs it, but I know when you move for refrigerator, you're supposed to let it kind of sit or not really, they don't really like being turned upside down. So anyway, uh, it's 24 hours later. Um, I just plugged it in and just uh, turned it on. So let's show you what it looks like. All right, here it is. It's plugged into the outlet. Um, you can see that it's reading 91 and 87. Um, I mean, it is hotter than hell in my garage, but um, uh, the temperature difference, I don't really know if that's gonna be a big deal or if that's showing something right off the bat. Um, I hope not, but the fan is on, um, the pressure is going, so we will come back and see if it uh, gets down to temperature. We'll see if the uh, thermistors uh, read right. All right, well, we're back. It's uh, two hours past, uh, have passed, and uh, take a look. They are set for 32 degrees. They are both reading 30, 32 degrees and the compressor is off. So, uh, yeah. It looks like uh, I fixed it. Cool. I uh, saved myself uh, $1,600 uh, from buying a new one. Um, man, so uh, anyone that's looking to do that, uh, don't be too afraid of it. Um, like I said, I, I really don't have any experience. It's the first time I've ever did something like that. So uh, just take your time and uh, either watch this video or watch other YouTube videos on how to do it and just take your time. You can do it. All right. Well, this brings this video to an end. Appreciate you guys checking it out and uh, we'll see you out on that trail.